Hi Nina, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. I'm very well indeed. <laughs> oh, just enjoying, enjoying the beautiful weather and happy to see that we are slowly but surely potentially making our way out of lockdown. Slowly um, but surely so, potentially. Yes. Yes. Exciting yes, times yes, ahead. Yes. Yes, yes. yes, exciting times ahead. Ho- hopefully a lot of less uncertainty. How, how have you been how have you been coping with it so far, by the way? Yeah, it's been absolutely fine, actually, I must say. I I think we are very fortunate to not know anyone who has been um, impacted by it health-wise or massively financially. Um, so really, really grateful for that. Personally, I have just been pretty much doing the same as I did before. So working from home, working mostly in my pajamas and... Um, you know, just living the brand, basically. So all fine. Indeed. I'm very impressed by the way in which you do live your brand day in, day out. And and by the way, for everyone who isn't aware, uh, Nina Clark is the CEO and founder of Night Tire, which is the Urban Sleep Company or the Urban Sleep Co, recently changing its name from the Urban Sleeping Co, right? Yes. So we went from Sleep Wear Co to the Sleep Co because now going to be moving into a few other sleep related categories. So just thought that would be a better overarching name. No, for sure. It uh, allows you to um, branch out into other product extensions, which is very wise. And yeah. so talk to me about Night Tire and your lovely yeah. pajamas. Um, How did the idea come about to wear bamboo or create bamboo-based clothing? Right, okay. So Night Hire, the idea for it came about because I had a personal need for it. And I think that most small business owners would agree that that's how they started their brand or their product. Um, So a couple of years ago, when my husband and I moved to London, I started struggling with sleep. And so I did a whole lot of research into different tweaks that you could make on a day-to-day basis to help you sleep better at night and came across a lot of really interesting information. And of course, there are many, many different changes that you can make. Um, But the one really interesting nugget that I stumbled across was that if you wear the right sleepwear, it can actually make a really big difference to your sleep. And when I say right sleepwear, it means sleepwear that's made of a fabric that is temperature regulating usually, that sort of wicks sweat away from your skin. Um, And so that sort of helps you to keep your body temperature even as you sleep because it goes up and down, up and down as you sleep. And that can often pull you out of deep sleep before you should get pulled out of your deep sleep. For example, it might make you wake up during the night um, or you could just be so uncomfortable at night that you just can't properly fall asleep. So I sort of latched onto that bit of information and thought, well, that is really interesting and started doing further research into the sleepwear markets. And I felt like there just weren't a lot of brands out there who were actually speaking to that need. So creating really functional sleepwear, but that was also really beautiful. And so I thought there was a gap in the market and I wanted to fill it. Um, but on the other hand of the, the spectrum, I also thought that the, the branding within the sleepwear market really needed some passion. So I always say I want to sort of bring a bit of vibe back to the bedtime tribe because um, sleepwear just seemed to me like a category that really required um a bit more oomph. So all the big players in the market are doing the exact same thing. The imagery looks the same. The sort of color scheme is the same. It's all very cutesy or just very bland. Um, and all the girls that I spoke to, a lot of my friends just said, you know, they don't actually care what they wear to bed and they're not passionate or loyal to any sleepwear brands. And so, yeah, it's, I just thought that was a real shame because you're actually wearing your sleepwear as the most important part of the day. Um, so often, you know, when you come home, you take off all of your uncomfortable clothing, you get into your PJs and it's like the happiest you can ever be. And then, of course, when, you, when you're when sleeping and I am a 
huge sleep lover and so can wax lyrical about the importance of sleep for a very long time but that is definitely the most important part of your day so i thought i needed to um yeah just create a product and a brand that could that could speak to those two sort of pain points that i picked up on and that's how okay. night came about amazing and so you decided because you're, you're originally from johannesburg right I am, yes. I'm actually originally from a town just outside of Johannesburg called Pretoria. Mm -hmm. And I then studied in Cape Town and lived there for a couple of years before moving to London. Okay. And so why why did you decide to um, launch Night Eye over here? Because I know you, you were working for uh, some FMCG brand, right? Prior to... Was it yes, that's correct. So, uh, yeah. So I actually started out, I've always been in marketing and brand management and always for FMCG companies. So back in the SA, I worked for Procter & Gamble. I worked for a soft drinks brand there um, for a couple of years after leaving Procter & Gamble when we had to move to Cape Town. Um, and then when we moved across to London for my husband's work, I started working at a little soft drinks company called Jules. Uh, and it was a really, really amazing experience. We did so much in the fairly short, I suppose, time that I was there as a marketing manager. Uh, we did the sponsorship of London Fashion Week. We did incredible brand collaborations. Um, just was able to do all the things that I think at the end of the day, we potentially did too much. And um, the two founders didn't quite realize, I suppose, how much money was lying out the door and they went fairly up sort of overnight. So at that point, I was already sort of working on the idea of a sleepwear brand and just decided, okay, well, this is now the little gap in my time where I can potentially just commit to it and it just went from there. That's amazing. And this is obviously the first time you've um, started a business, right? Yes. It is the first time that I officially started a business, but my husband and I were actually chatting to friends about it the other night, and we were sort of going through all the business ideas and companies that we had thought of started, had worked on starting, had pitched to start. And so I had also sort of had my finger in a few different pies, tried a whole lot of different things. This was the first thing that absolutely stuck and it has been a couple of years now. So um, here's hoping it's just going to keep going. Yeah, because you obviously you founded it properly in 2016. Um, when when did you officially launch? Was that when you officially launched or? No, no. So we, uh, ooh, I say we, but it's just me. I launched at the end the Royal of... Week. 2017 actually so well it was in december so let's say actually officially sort of 2018 and onwards uh so i started working on it in 2016 and that is when the whole sort of process of product development and branding and all of that happened um i wanted to again do all the design work myself so i don't have a fashion background or anything along those lines so that was a real learning curve thank goodness for google and youtube and really kind people that I met along the way who were super willing to just lend their expertise. Um, but I did everything around the, I even painted the first prints myself. Um, I did all the design work myself, working with um, the suppliers who actually make the, the pajamas. So it was, I would say it took, it took a good long time to get it all up and running, but uh, we always say it was just a very expensive MBA year, sort of like a self-imposed MBA because I learned everything about starting a business in that time. For sure. And during that first year, were you, were you sleeping much? I mean, in terms of being a founder in your first year, how much, how much time were you actually put into sleeping? Yeah, no, I think it is quite ironic because definitely I have many sleepless nights, nice overnight tires. <laughs> <diet>, so <laughs> um, it, it does um, tend to uh, sort of be the root of many anxious thoughts at night. But mm -hmm. I, I do also think that I've always been quite good about the work-life balance. And so I do tend to make sure that the sleep is there exercises there you know all the all the important um sort of um, 
features of a healthy life uh, doesn't doesn't go by the wayside just because of work because at the end of the day you know that's that's it's what's important. going to keep us alive. <laughs> it is important. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, what's, it's, it's what's going to keep us sane. And I think that's, um, yeah. I think that's a difficult part for any founder. I think, especially going through year one, I mean, putting all of your ducks in a row and making sure that you're in the right position to launch. Um, mm. What would you say to, I suppose, what, what did you find the most difficult part of that first year prior to actually launching? Um, I actually found the, incredible amount of options really really difficult especially when it came to picking suppliers so it was that thing of i could work with absolutely anyone in the world and so where do you start um you know and i guess i did reach out to thousands of different factories and then you sort of whittle it down from me in terms of who communicates with you best who is happy to take your minimum order quantities who can obviously you know do a whole lot of sampling and then if their quality is best that's the most important thing but you know price points all the rest so they had to check a whole lot of boxes but at the end of the day i think you know we are so connected nowadays and we can work with anyone in the world and so how do you decide? I think I have very much magpie tendencies when it comes to getting distracted by new things and other options and better options. And so even with things like um, deciding on prints and, um, and patterns and styles and all the rest, it is quite tricky to find something that you love and then commit to it. Um, but I think also another thing that I struggled with in the first year that is still a struggle today is the wearing of all the different hats and sort of just balancing the time that I need for the different functions within the business and all of that. So making sure that I spend enough time on what is important to drive the business forward, but then also on the small day-to-day -day admin tasks that are also important because if that goes by, falls by the wayside, then you know, you are going to have unhappy customers or you're going to have parcels that will go missing or whatever the case may be. Um, but just making sure that, yeah, I'm sort of balancing that. Otherwise, you know, you can make sure that a business keeps ticking along little by little, but you're not setting enough time aside for strategy and big picture thinking, for example. And then that's also not, not a good use of my time. It's, so, yeah. it's it's hard. I think I think a lot of um, misunderstanding when it comes to I suppose um, allocating and yeah I suppose allocating your time most effectively comes down to when people don't put enough importance on admin. I mean I've always I've always told I've, I've got a sixteen year old brother so he's so young so impressionable <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be young again. <laughs> oh, God, don't even tell me. Um, I get him to do a little bit of my social media work, bless him. And um, oh. I, try to, I try to get him to understand it doesn't matter how good, the, how, how good you are at doing the job. I want you to be able to record and send me an information. So admin is always 50% of the job and it's just as important because it demonstrates your ability to actually do it. And obviously from mm. your perspective, it demonstrates your ability to stay in contact with your customers. And I think that's something that people often pay little credence to, if that makes sense. Oh, totally. I think no one actually realizes until you are in it, how much admin it takes to run a small business yourself. You know, I think in a big company, you often have, you have PAs, you have receptionists, you have back office workers, uh, you have travel agents doing this and that. And so um, I, I was actually very surprised <laughs> when I started getting into this to find how much work goes into very little things. Um, and so you can sometimes feel a little bit frustrated with, um, yeah, just like needing to pick through the admin um, to, to make very small steps for mankind. <laughs> no, for your brand. <laughs> it's, it's that though. Yeah, it's, it's trying to get past the fact that it's monotonous and I suppose a self-realization process that it is actually totally necessary to, as you just said, taking those small steps for your brand. I mean, how, mm -hmm. how, did, you get over, how did you get over that monotony and, as you said, frustration? 
Oh, you mm, have. I, I'm <laughs> no, I'm the wrong person to ask actually because I arrive in admin. Let me tell you, I am one for plus. Okay, and for anyone oh. listening to this, you won't actually be able to see, but this is my diary. Okay, wow. and I also love writing it down because oh, the satisfaction that you get from just oh, <laughs> ticking something off is magnificent. So I do love, and you'll see, I mean, if you watch me working, you'll see I sort of gravitate towards the small wins and I just love picking those off. So I really don't actually mind. And I think that, again, it's very gratifying to be able to see little things that you do that um, you can actually sort of see the results of, whereas often the the bigger sort of strategy work, um, you can't you can't necessarily see um, see it in action right there no. right then so yeah i actually can't help you there <laughs> oh, that's good that's good i mean it's excellent that you've been able to find a way to do that obviously if that's something that you've already been strong i did see actually that you'd um you'd repeatedly underlined like really important quotes from the matt walker book as well ah uh, yes it's so good it is so good but you know what i have actually given us a break halfway through because to be very honest with you, he is so hectic about how, and I mean, I, I get it. It's the science behind it, and this guy is relaying the facts, and so it's important that we know. But there is no sort of, I don't know if this is um, a word that you can say on the air, but there's sort of no pussyfooting around the, the fact of how horrendously bad it is to not get a good night's sleep. And that honestly sucks me out so much. So on the days when I read a lot of Why We Sleep, um, the Matthew Walker book, I sleep so badly that night because I think in my brain somewhere, I'm just like, oh my word, oh my word. I like cannot not have a good night's sleep. Otherwise tomorrow I might actually be dead. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's just, so hilariously counterintuitive. I know, right? I um yeah. I'll, I'll, <laughs> send, I'll send a copy of this to Matt Walker. I'll send, I'll send a copy of this to the California um, Institute for uh, for Sleep. It's that, isn't it? That's very funny. <laughs> yeah. God, that's so funny. Um, okay, and okay. So let's let's move on to how. So obviously, you we we just gone through your first year. Your first year was all based identifying where you find your suppliers, um, doing your designs, learning. Your first year was your self imposed MBA, as it were. Um, I, I suppose a lot, lot, the last bit from that. No, 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 that's that's irrelevant. Okay, so yeah, so year two, year two when you first launched, how did you plan for your launch? Uh, where, what did you do? What was yeah? Tell me all. Um, hmm, okay, so. Whew. It was like such a long time ago, but it actually wasn't. Oh my. Uh, what did I do for my launch? It, it kind of felt like it just snuck up on me, to be honest with you. So there was no big party. There was no sort of massive uh, media push or anything. So to be very honest with you, I have had incredible growth from a totally sort of organic marketing campaign <laughs> in a way um, because everything is self-funded and I feel like there's so much money that's spent on the product so it's this huge capital outlay in the beginning and not just in the beginning of course every time there's a new range that launches I, I honestly I'm still struggling to then plow even more money behind marketing and sales and all the rest so I have actually at this point just done a whole lot of organic marketing where I tend to, it's, it's all about the small ones for me, to be very honest with you, and I'm very strategic about who I get in touch with, the influences that I think are worthy in terms of working with. So I, the, the launch of the first range was very much similar to I would say how the day to day is for night hire in terms of, as I said, just being very selective uh, in terms of, of the marketing that I want to do and sort of where I want to throw money behind um, different touch points. So there was, of course, a big social push, but all organic, you know, the newsletters, the blog posts, the 
uh, there was, I did a few markets in the beginning. So just sort of slowly but surely, I was there, a bit of a soft launch, really. And um, then just, just gained traction from there. So, so nothing too exciting to report, unfortunately. No, 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 that is, that is exciting. You, you did it. If it was all organic, then that means that you put in a huge amount of brand building activities into your brand prior to launch, which is incredible. Yeah. How did you maintain the motivation? Because, you know, I know that you've got six and a half thousand followers on Night Eye now and you self have 2000. You live your brand day in, day out. So it's it's crazy how much you live your brand. It's very impressive. Um, but did you ever feel demotivated at any point And how did you overcome it? I wouldn't say that I ever felt demotivated for a long period of time. And for sure, there have been those rogue days where I would threaten to just throw in the towel and this is it and I'm over it and I just want to go back to, you know, getting paid a salary and working for someone else. And they are very much up and down days. I'm sure you know, and the down days often come after very up days. So I was literally actually chatting to a friend now and I was saying that I feel like tomorrow potentially I'm a little bit scared for it because today has been such a great night hire day. There's been so many exciting things happening, wonderful sales and good feedback. And I just got a new uh, sample for a new style that I'm doing and it looks great and my new stock is on their way for the range that's launching next week. So all is, all systems go. But I fear for tomorrow. <laughs> because, you know, I think that's just how life works, where um, it just keeps you, keeps your feet on solid ground um, with this whole entrepreneur, small biz journey that I'm on. But, yeah, so I would say, you know, thank goodness for the peaks and the troughs, because, uh after after the disappointments and the setbacks and all of that they often are just really wonderful wins and i think that's that's what keeps me going but you know it is definitely throughout this time i would say i've never been rejected so many times in my life because it's just and rejection in the sense that people also just 100% ignore you <laughs> so you can send us emails to a hundred press and literally just it can just be crickets. Um and that is that is fairly demotivating. And you know, some <laughs> customers who just <laughs> I mean that really, you know, that can really <laughs> oh, yeah. but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um you know and sometimes your product is also just not for everyone and that is totally fine as well. I've learned to have to deal with that because I also used to take that incredibly personally. I think when the brand is you and it's your baby, then man alive, when someone rejects it, it hurts so much. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Beautifully. And so, so for anyone else out there who's obviously struggling with the troughs, um, what do you do on those days to get yourself out of the funk? I mean, obviously, is there any way that you can just step back and look at it objectively? Um, actually, another question, which is somewhat related. What, what um, when you say you're doing some kind of marketing campaign, you are just talking about how your sales and you, you get no response back from an email marketing campaign, what, what, what you just said. What mm -hmm. kind of, do you, you have, you obviously have some kind of target in mind. You've got this, you've got this preconceived notion in your mind when you're sending out this marketing campaign, when you don't get the response that you're expecting. You're, it, it, it hits you. It hits you really hard. And as you said very rightly there, because it's your personal brand, it hurts even more. But how? What, what kind of target do you set in your mind? So what in terms of like, like number target? Is it a number target or what is it that is, is, is get, gets you down when you, it doesn't go the way that you're expecting? Hmm. I... I must admit, uh, it's, it's not usually number targets. I used to be very much a numbers girl in my earlier life, I would like to say. But nowadays, if there's anything numbers related, that definitely goes to the bottom of my <laughs> little very long to-do list. Um, so I usually just, hmm, I 
I'm not actually sure how I normally decide, well, this has been an absolute fail. Uh, <laughs> definitely, if there's absolutely no response, then, you know, that's, that's fairly clear. Yeah. But I think there's always, you know, especially with press that I reach out to, there's always more important press uh, than others that I would see as a really big win if they were interested same with influencers for example um and you know this is often press that i potentially feel like i know better because i read the for example the newsletters that they write or the uh, blog posts or the um you know instagram or i follow them on social media or whatever the case may be and i really feel like they would be perfect to convey the spirit and uh, the ethos of night hire and they would flipping love this product if they could just answer me and be like cool send me stuff and I will sleep in it and I just know they will be screaming it from the rooftops but alas they don't take that first step then yeah then that's that's often um fairly disconcerting but you know, and is it, I hope that answers your, your second part of the question. In terms of the what I sort of do to keep going, I mean, on a day-to-day, -day, very granular level, I just, I tend to use exercise and sleep to sort of remedy any stresses and any emotional <laughs> upheavals so i you know it would say almost nothing can't be fixed with a, a bit of fresh air and a walk or a run or just a bit of endorphins and then for sure because i am a sleep enthusiast of note i would say just sleep it off and everything looks better in the morning but then you know it's that act of just keeping on keeping on uh just just trying again the next day just getting to what you need to do and because you keep going at some stage like there is going to be good news again you know because you keep selling the next customer will come back to you and say oh my word I love it it's changed my life or because you send another email to a journalist the next day and they respond to you that'll be the next one that needs to sort of get you out of it again if that makes sense. Um, so what I wanted to speak about next was obviously we were just having a very brief chat about this in our intermission. I just wanted to understand from your perspective, because I understand for the last four years, everything's been purely self-funded. Have you thought about looking into any form of additional investment at all? I have absolutely thought about it many a time. And as I mentioned to you, I have done so much extensive research on all the different options. So everything from VC to getting a loan to a government loan to crowdfunding. Uh, the options are endless yet again, going back to my one of my first points about ooh, there's so many options for everything nowadays. But I... I just haven't actually pushed play on any of it. I think that it's a bit of a chicken and an egg situation because I think as soon as you have all that additional funding, you you know, you really need to sort of step up operations super, super quickly. And for now I I'm still quite happy to, you know, slowly but surely um crawl my way through the the, the small gains um and i also i think um i would struggle to let go of part of the company um so it is a consideration but for now we are fairly comfortable to to just keep expanding and and keep it all in house 
No, that's understandable. And because uh, you, you mentioned this when we started as well, there's the um, the fear of relinquishing control. Um, mm. So and, I mean, obviously, it doesn't just apply to um, VCs and investment, but obviously in terms of um, future employees. Uh, what what do you reckon it is about um, having your own product, your own little baby that it is that you don't want to let go entirely? Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, I do think that one can't be too short-sighted about it. And I, I do realize that, you know, more people will absolutely bring a different dimension to the brand and fresh thinking and perspective is so important. And, you know, other people can do things so much better than what you can in in different ways. Um, I, I'm not strong at everything that is required to run a business. So I do realize that there is a lot of value in hiring people who can bring the best um, to the fore with certain functions um, and requirements. But yeah, I just think, you know, it's it's definitely something that I haven't closed, closed the door to, but um, maybe, maybe only in a couple of months time. So stay yeah. tuned. Yeah, there's no, there's no rush. Um, yeah. So I spoke. We spoke a little bit about you know the struggles that you and other founders have gone through in the past. What over the last, throughout your adventure with Night Tire so far, look back and tell me what what's the what's been the biggest highlight for you? Mm, I definitely think one of the biggest highlights were just getting it up and running. So just actually going live, seeing the year and a half of hard work in the flesh, getting that first batch, batch of stock in. And then I think it's not necessarily a, a one-off occasion or one day, but truly I think getting feedback from customers on a frequent basis who have been affected by, or affected in a good way, uh, by the in, sort of incredible release from sleep issues because of um, you know the content that um, I create that I share on the Nike platforms, but then also just because of the product, a lot of them suffer from hot sweats or hot flashes and night sweats. Um, you know, whether it is hormonal or menopausal or they are pregnant or whatever the case may be, um, to to hear how it, you know, has helped them so much with their sleep, I think that definitely just sort of gets stored in my memory banks. And I, I pull on those bits of feedback on days when the going gets tough. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing that you've been able to because to change a lot of people's lives, I think it's really important that your product can do that, which mm. um, which is amazing. You wouldn't you wouldn't have thought. I mean, obviously, you probably did think because that's why originally you started in the first place. But you would never have thought that something as simple as pajamas would have been able to really um, massively change the way in which people do sleep and how that ends up impacting people's days on on a weekly, monthly basis is so so important. Mm. Um, and how how did you? How did you find your community? Because have you got like a proper night tire community where people can interact? Or how does it work? So I actually don't, but that's so interesting that you say that because I do have it in the back of my mind and I've got it somewhere on this to-do list over here. But I I would love to be able to start some sort of loyalty program or, you know, like an inner circle core night tire um, gang who would just be, you know, trusted advisors, but also real sort of super fans of the brand who would, who I can sort of, you know, um, bounce ideas off of and get feedback on uh, prints and, and styles and other ideas that I work on for the brand. So I don't officially, but they for sure are people who I personally interact with, whether they were friends before or are friends now because of their love for the brand um, that I, I know I can always sort of depend on to to sort of show excitement for everything that comes about and, and also give feedback when it's needed. 
That's superb. And obviously, from um, the perspective of the brand itself, what's what you've obviously done. I know I mentioned this earlier about how you live on brand values inside and out. Um, did you did you have to go through any kind of brand value identification process, or was it just simply look? I know what my brand is. I know what my personality is. Let's put them together and see if people like them. No, I was actually, I was quite particular about it in the beginning. And I think coming from a marketing and brand management background, this is, you know, one of the core principles of just, um, yeah, creating, creating that brand from scratch. So I definitely spent a lot of time thinking about it and speaking to people and getting their feedback and then editing my brand values. But at the end of the day, you know, I did want to speak people like me and so I think that definitely makes it easier because I I know me I know what I like I like I know the um yeah there's you know what I what I read and what I watch and where I go and all of that and so that for sure helped to uh to steer my thinking um in terms of who I speak to and how I I speak and all of that and so Definitely the, the tone of voice, for example, is so me. <laughs> if you read any of the, any of the posts, whether it is on the website, on social, whatever, it is, it is very much how, how you would have a conversation with me. So it is very personal. Indeed. Um, and what, what I liked as well, um, actually, no, I want to talk more about the tool before I mention this, but the, how, how did you, so what was the actual process, uh, the iterative process that you took in order to get customer feedback on your brand values? On the brand values? Hmm. Um, so I, I mean, I basically just over the, the period of developing the, all the sort of core principles of the brand as well as the business plan. I was looking at the business plan the other day uh, for the first time probably in three years. And it was so interesting to see, oh my goodness, how in depth I went. Whereas I think if I was to do it now, I would just MacGyver it and just, you know, hit the ground running and act first and think later. Whereas I think I was way too pedantic about it in the beginning. And for sure, I also find that it changes so much over the, the time that you're actually out there in the world and again getting that feedback from customers on a day-to-day basis and um, so I've been so interested to see how the brand has evolved and all of that but I think for sure the core just stays the same so I mean I didn't have I didn't have any um sort of official focus groups or anything along those lines I think I'll some questionnaires in the beginning two friends friends of friends um, absolutely, you know, um, used up all of my <laughs> contact resources that I possibly had. Um, and then, yeah, just sort of, um, kept, kept the conversation going from, from there on and kept learning. No, it's amazing uh, because I think I think people don't understand it is an iterative process and it is something that you yeah. keep up to adapt to. Um, and so the other area was, Obviously, when you have your brand values identified, you need to find influencers, which is something that obviously you're doing at the moment. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. No, I am. I am. But I have, oh, influencer marketing, wow, has been such a hit and a miss for me. In the beginning, I sort of just tried to reach out to influencers who had a lot of followers. <laughs> and who I know or kind of knew through other people. And so I just, you know, sort of threw the net very wide and wherever it landed, great, you can, you know, try and be an ambassador for the brand. And I realized very quickly that even the influencers who had a lot of followers didn't necessarily uh, do much to move the needle in terms of awareness or even sales for Nightire. And through that, I definitely learned that it is super important to make sure that, you know, their brand, which is them, values totally align with your brand values. And then the, their followers will, you know, find a sort of a resonance with, with what you're saying and what your brand is all about. 
So nowadays I'm a lot more picky about it and I do definitely find that I will only work with an influencer if they are happy to, you know, sort of keep the relationship going for a while. So I don't want it to be a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, one post kind of a thing because that also doesn't doesn't tend to, to do much. I think that, um, you know, people, of course, need to see what is it, seven to nine times that they have to interact with the brand before they actually decide to buy or act on it. Um, and so that one post, that that doesn't do anything um so again there needs to be that relationship there needs to be a passion for them as well when it comes to the product and and the love for the brand and so often it does help when they approach you um which i'm hoping more and more we will be in a position to you know where where people sort of care of it and love it so much that they they would want to desperately be part of it so that's goals but um did I answer your question about the influencer? I feel like I've gone in a circle now. It's, you're fine. You're fine. Look, I'm, that's, yeah. I, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you prompts as well, so it's all good. Um, okay. The next one is going to be, obviously, you, you mentioned that you were initially looking for influencers with a large following, which I think is I think is everyone's initial mistake when they go in for influencer marketing. There's now, mm. um, it's interesting you say the seven to nine times as well, um, because obviously there is a website called Post for Rent, where you mm-hmm. can actually go and it's like a platform where you can just go and find multiple influencers. And the idea is that you can do campaigns with them, but the idea is to have an effective campaign, you have to take on like four or five different influencers. It ends up mm. being quite costly naturally because you've got to pay post for rent as well. But, yeah. um, you know, the idea is you get it out, out, out to as many as possible um, in that regard. And the likelihood of, a, you know, one, a, one person following those five brands is a lot, a lot higher and then like that they shared on the story and post as well a lot higher so mm. seven times works perfectly um in in regards to how you've how you found found the influencers as well because i think um uh, what, one of the chaps i was speaking to uh, jordan from 77 threads he's he's been he's done well i think I'm not sure how successful he's been at uh, influence marketing yet in terms of numbers, but he's he was he he couldn't sing the praises enough of one of his influencers who only had like a small following, like in like 900. He was like a micro influencer, but the thing is, he created such superb content with all of this streetwear that he got a lot of engagement. Um, how how? I mean, did, was there any other parameters that you've select uh, you've got gone by to identify which influencer to go by, or was it? Yeah, I think the other thing that I'm quite quite clear on now is that they can't really be uh, sort of fashion influencers or even travel because even though Night Hire is great to take on your travels and it's basically one of the line, like rhetoric lines that I sometimes try and follow, that's not really what appeals to people who follow travel bloggers. So it needs to be more along the lines of health and wellness and well-being because at the end of the day I think that is the real sort of heart behind Night Hire and so people who are interested in eco-friendly in you know um, mental health and self-care and all of that that sort of really speaks to them when the influences that they follow um sort of go along that theme so that's one of the things and then for sure I think micro influences is where it's at nowadays um and definitely their engagement does tend to be higher than some of the bigger ones. And again, I think if it is a product that requires a little bit of um, education, then then that is important, you know, then you can't really be sending it to, I don't know, a big celebrity or something um, and hope that that's going to land with the target market because then it's, yeah, it's probably probably just not going to um, impact them as much. Whereas if a person is sort of willing to talk about the story behind the brand, why bamboo is so good for your sleep, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, that again, I think can help to sort of nail, nail the, the point home. Yeah, that's interesting because obviously you've had to identify that along the way as well, because obviously mm. uh, your target market uh, naturally must have changed throughout that time. Um, okay. So, Let's 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 move on to vision. Where do you see night tire? Where are you going? 
because obviously you've just changed the urban sleep coast so you can branch out into product extensions more related to beds and sleeping in general and the actual act of sleeping and all that so what what else what else is in store it's all very exciting oh it is so exciting and i think that it is such a great category to be part of right now uh, a lot of people have said this is the year of sleep and so you know, I think it's just going to become more and more important for people in general. And so we will find that there will be a lot more brands and products coming to the market. There's already just too many, actually, and a lot of them are gimmicky, for sure. Um, you know, but I think people are willing and keen to invest in products that can help them to have a good night's sleep. Because at the end of the day, it's this funny dichotomy of like, we are more interested in sleep. We now realize how important it is for our health, but we also are suffering more from sleep issues because of obviously the blue light exposure and just being so overstimulated during the day and having all the anxiety about all the things we need to do. So yeah, we now like need to invest in that and the knowledge of it to be able to remedy this. So, um, so there's a lot that I can do in the sleep category. Um, the very next steps that I'm looking to take is just to move into firstly creating uh, sleep candles. So I guess pre-sleep candles because you don't want to tell anyone to sleep with a candle burning. But um, just sort of, you know, candles made of sleepy scents um, from different essential oils. Uh, with a little bit of CBD oil in there as well to help you to properly relax at night. Um, and then you can actually use it on your skin as massage oil uh, afterwards. But that is something that I'm really hoping to launch actually in the next month. So that is in production and should be good to go before for sure Christmas gift things start. Um, so that's a very small sort of range expansion that I'm working on. Then I'm also, I've collaborated with um, another sleep enthusiast and a girl who's actually starting a sleep specific market base in Copenhagen. And we are creating a sleep ebook. So I was actually just now going through like the latest edits. So my goodness, I knew how many, <laughs> how many times I was going to have to reread that book. I mean, it's got pretty much the same effect as the Matthew Walker while we sleep. <laughs> like I'm sort of like reading all the facts that I write down and I'm just like, Oh my gosh better sleep well tonight um but anyway so we have created this um sleep ebook that we will be incorporating in the sort of night high offering as well um so that's sort of been a really interesting like totally different non-product related um uh, sort of project that i've been working on and really enjoying and then there is a potential sleep supplement uh little something in the pipeline but that is a little bit further down the line than the two other things that I mentioned to you and then there's of course bedding that I'm working on kids range um and then the world is your oyster really you know as you say there's actual bedding not just you know like duvet covers and all of that there's bamboo pillows there's whatever <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's like, quite exciting uh, no, it is really exciting. It is really exciting. And uh, I was just, um, you just got me thinking when you mentioned there there might be some kind of pill moving forwards. Um, mm. Because obviously there's 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 been a huge effect when it comes to probiotics. I think one of my friends takes probiotics and she's been finding that she's been sleeping considerably better. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, I know about that. I haven't actually researched that link much at all so thank you for mentioning that i shall no worries no worries i, I have it <laughs> I, <laughs> I haven't either um, but you know my, my my sleeping pattern tends to be anything between five and seven hours which is bad and i remember mm. it's don't don't do the disapproving noise <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> um, but I remember what um, Matt Walker said during that Joe Rogan podcast I sent you the uh, the link mm. to and he was saying how um, we all need seven to nine hours sleep because the brain naturally clear, cleans itself of neurotoxins and there's this huge amount of machismo and this kind of pro masculine 
March to not sleeping very much, like the Mark Wahlberg saying that he only sleeps two or three hours a night, which is so unhealthy. And if I did that, I'd be insane. I already am, but, you know, more so. And what he was saying and the example he was giving was that obviously Ronald Reagan and Maggie Thatcher, when um, <clears throat> I think obviously during the 80s, they, they were boasting about how they – was it 80s? Yeah, 70s, 80s. They were, get, they were getting four hours a night. And mm. then they ended up ending their lives with Alzheimer's. Which yeah. is, which is madness. It really is. I mean, yeah. How how has this not been a more prominent issue before? And that's something that I constantly tell my parents to do. God, will mm. they listen? Will they change their habits when they're in their sixties? No. Will they? I mean, you can't you can't teach an old dog new tricks, right? <laughs> no, no, you can't. It's very difficult, but it is it is crazy. Um. So, um. Obviously, just before we end, mm. talk to me about the PJs you're wearing. Right. Okay. So I am wearing the short fit at the moment. So this is part of the current range that is pretty much sold out and we are moving on to new patterns and new prints very soon, guys, literally next week. So do keep your eyes peeled and your ears to the ground. But basically just a quick one on Nysire. I mean, I've been rambling on about it for so long. So I think I probably have mentioned this already, but it is a range of 100% organic bamboo sleepwear and sleep accessories and a little bit of bedding as well and who knows what else as we've now said um, and everything is designed with details in mind as I'd like to call it and also just to make sure that it is the easiest to move around and to basically do everything in because literally I do everything in my nightwear and I think that a lot of people nowadays actually do everything in their sleepwear as well and um, this is I mean this is not like the worst work from home aspect right <laughs> for all your zoom calls anyway um so yeah that's that's basically that's basically nightwear that is awesome. That is night tire. Um, and what I often ask my guests before we um, end the show is to give me a 10 to 15 second elevator pitch, which you kind of already did. But now you know that it's a pitch, you might be a little bit more nervous, which is what I kind of expect from people. Um, basically, <laughs> the idea is if you're in an elevator, as is, is often the case when you're actually allowed outside, um, you find a potential investor when night tire is ready to get investors in your elevator and you want to quickly give them an overview of night tire where are you heading why should they should come to your site oh my word you're so right honestly when you said elevator pitch my <laughs> my <laughs> hands just started sweating <laughs> straight away <laughs> you the pressure is on 15 seconds okay so night tire is a range of 100 percent organic sleepwear and sleep accessories designed for you to have your absolute best night's sleep. Bamboo is temperature regulating. It helps to keep your body temperature even so that you can be basically live your best life and sleep your best sleep every night while wearing it. Um, That's it. That's perfect. Okay, cool. That was perfect. That was fine. That was fine. See, it's so funny. We, you elicit so so much I nerves and anxiety. Gosh. <laughs> Apologies. This is why I um, probably don't so... want to touch the VCs because it is just very <laughs> terrifying. No, I'm well, joking. You've got something to work on. One you've got a plan. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. No, but it was great. Um, Nina, thank you so much uh, for jumping on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you. It's uh, It's been amazing learning, to, uh, knowing that there's something out there that can genuinely help people sleep because i know it's not even just sequestrated um to a female target audience either i know you guys do um or you <laughs> do male body do male body <laughs> shorts as well which is excellent i should definitely check those out uh, which is awesome um is there anything else you'd like to say to my one or two fans out there um before we end uh stop it come now few more than one or two no but um i mean i just want to caveat this by saying it's not gonna make you fall asleep it's not a, you know, pajamas are not a sleeping pool at the end of the day, but, you know, it, it, it just does go a long way towards making it more comfortable at the end of the day. So I did just want to make sure that that was 
clear. Just in case anyone was like expecting absolute miracles. Disclaimer. Um, yeah, exactly. It's fine, burnt. Okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, so do you please just check out the, the website. It is nighttie.com. You follow us on social, which is also just nighttie across the board. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll um, keep you entertained. We'll supply lots of sleep tips and hacks. Um, and and you'll get to see really awesome people in beautiful PJs. And if you head over to the Night Tire website, you'll be able to see the YouTube video of the Night Tire song where um, where Nina pets a goat in a night tire, which is hilarious. Yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't stop laughing. It was great. <laughs> I mean, among other things. Among other things that I do in my life. So definitely take it out and see what else there is in there. <laughs> and don't judge uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> There's no judgment, just a lot of laughter. Uh, but thanks again, Nina. Really appreciate sure. it. And um, thank, you. thank you, everyone, for listening. Really appreciate it. Uh, join me next time um, when I'll be interviewing Isabel Dancy. She's a life coach uh, from Isabel Dancy Consulting. So do me a favor and join me next time for some real time advice. Bye.